then to uh, our, our, our guest speaker this morning. We're going to be um, welcoming Pat McClure. Pat, I've known for, I don't know, 25, 30 years. He's probably Orange County's top sales performance trainer and guru, if you will, former 25 year corporate uh, executive in sales with uh, Fortune uh, 100 firms. Uh, with that said, I'll turn it over now to Pat McClure. Hey, thank you, Bill, for that great introduction. I am excited to be talking to you about the future of sales. Now, Bill and I have known each other for, oh golly, 20 years now. And about three or four months ago, he asked me if I would be a guest speaker and he gave me the topic. And this is a very challenging topic. I said, I said, Bill, you got to be kidding me. You want me to cover the future of sales in 20 minutes? Uh, it's yes. almost impossible. But anyway, I'm going to try and cover the high points. I've done quite a bit of research since then with uh, KPMG and Gartner and Harvard Business School and a number of other sources. And I pulled together a lot of information. Also, uh, you know, talked to a number of associates in the industry as well as every uh, as well as many of you. And so this is a capsule, capsule look at the future of sales. We're looking at what's it going to look like in the next five years. And I hope this is useful to you. Let's see if I can get this slide to advance. Uh, heck, I move this thing out of the way. There it is. Okay, let's take a look at the sales challenges, what we're looking at for the next five years. And by the way, you're gonna, all gonna get this presentation sent to you afterwards and we'll have some time afterwards for questions and answers. So sales challenges, next five years, you can take a look. More technology, fewer people. Ever increasing automated systems. This is what's gonna be revolutionizing sales. AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Less personalized contacts. Uh, there's gonna be a decrease in face-to-face -face selling. It's obvious we're doing a lot more work from our home offices, a lot more work with Zoom, Google, Team, and there's a growing need for digital marketing. So these are the big challenges and the trends that we're looking at for the next five years. Now, uh, one of my associates in, uh, in Vistage told me about two years ago, he says, you know what, your sales role is going away. You're gonna be obsolete. Well, what he really meant was that certain types of sales were gonna be taken over by technology. And you can see on the screen here, there are several different sales roles that are relevant today and also into the future. Obviously, you've got online sales, retail sales, inside sales, customer support. Many of those are being automated. You're seeing a lot more, you know, people are buying things on Amazon, people are buying retail, people are doing uh, a lot of work there. The focus of this presentation is really on the highlighted areas, the outside sales and the B2B large accounts. These are where your sales skills and your most highly trained professional salespeople live and breathe. Their, their skills and their abilities are not going away, but they are being enhanced by a number of different technologies, which we'll talk about. You're seeing a lot more CRM, AI, uh, advanced generation, lead generation systems, and it's, it's getting more and more sophisticated to crowd through the noise and to sell large systems. And uh, so let's talk more about that. <clears throat> okay, here's some interesting information from Gartner. Gartner, in case uh, some of you might not be familiar with them, they're probably the biggest think tank in terms of the future. And uh, they make a lot of money analyzing and writing reports. But uh, the most recent report from Gartner, they expect that by 2025, 80% of your B2B sales interactions are going to occur in digital channels. This means people are gonna buy digitally instead of face-to-face. -face. Uh, they're also projecting that, and this is interesting, 60% of sales organizations are going to transition from experience and intuition-based selling to data-driven selling. Now, historically in sales, your top salespeople were really savvy. They knew the industry. They were also, they, they had good people skills. They relied a lot on, on intuition and experience and relationship in order to close sales. What Gartner is projecting, and a little bit of what they're saying is self-serving because they sell services on this, but what they're projecting is that more and more people, uh, more and more companies are going to be basing their decisions based upon research and data instead of the individual interaction with their sales rep. 
And you see that on the slide top right. They actually surveyed 44% of millennials. These are the people under the age of 40. By survey, are preferring to do their transaction, to do their purchasing without any interaction with sales reps. Now, if you're a sales rep, this, this should cause you some worry. Why are they saying that? They're saying that because ease of use, access to information, crisp, quick transactions occur on the digital world instead of face-to-face. -face. That's what they're saying. And obviously they grew up in the digital world. The other Gen Xers and baby boomers uh, they see the world, they, they rely a lot more on face-to-face -face contact. So your up and coming buyers, anybody under the age of 40, you better be in the digital world really big time if you're in sales. Okay, another slide from Gartner, the convergence of hyper automation, digital scalability and AI, artificial intelligence. This is where the future is guys. This is where your people, your processes, your technology really need to take a look at how do we automate? How do we integrate AI? And how do we do digital scalability? Well, if you take a look right now, uh, AI and, and is, is really impacting the way we buy. If you buy anything on Amazon, they'll automatically recommend five other things for you to buy. Well, why is that? Well, they've already used big data. They already know your pattern. They know your buying habits. They know what you're, what you're used to doing not only what you buy, the kind of things you buy, when you buy them, right? All of that information is available. It's already been captured within AI. So that's why they're able to automatically recommend things to you. So this trend is going to expand and is going to be residing with salespeople. So salespeople will be out in the field calling on customers and they will already know the buying patterns of those customers. They will already know the buying patterns and the history of most of the people in that company. They will know what to say, when to say it, how to say it. They will know a lot of information. And not only that, this information will be delivered to them on their mobile, on their phone, right before they go into the meeting. They'll know the latest real-time information about all of the people that they're gonna be meeting with. Not only that, AI will also enhance and will tell them right there before they even walk in the door what to say and who to say it to and how to say it, right? So this is where the, the world of sales is going with hyper automation and digital scalability. Uh, a report from KPMG, you can take a look at it. I'll, I'll briefly, they're talking about the last, the biggest change that we're seeing in the last hundred years is right now. Today's customers, whether they're B2B, B2B to C or B2C, business to consumer, they're not passive anymore. They used to rely upon you to deliver them information and to educate them and to excite them about your products. Now what they're doing is they're going online and they're finding out all about your company, your products, your services. Uh, and they're also checking you versus the competition. They're getting real-time scores and, uh, and information about how reliable you are. They're getting that already before you even go in on the first call. So connected customers, intelligent customers are what we're dealing with now. And the days of showing up with a brochure and educating your customer are way long gone. Okay, we talk about artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm putting this on not to not to not to open up your eyes on some of the things that what people are doing with AI, artificial intelligence. It is revolutionizing things. If you take a look at how AI is affecting us, take a look just at lead scoring. Well, using big data and artificial intelligence, you can develop a profile of your ideal customer, and that profile will score, not only it will deliver to you, it will find all of the potential customers in multiple areas, and it will also score them in terms of where you need to go, in terms of what is the most likely, what is the best, okay? Sales forecasting, right now custom companies are using CRM systems like CRM with uh, sales, salesforce.com, Microsoft, and your AI is being used to start predicting your sales forecast. So your AI is going to tell you the seasonality, when customers buy, what are the trigger points, how are you going to get to them, and your AI is also going to recommend the script. Lead development, lead generation, 
is revolutionized by AI because guess what? Big data can capture all of the information about your database and it can deliver it to your salespeople and it can revolutionize. Your lead generation systems, your, your, your salespeople will show up on a Monday morning and they'll not only have a list of the top 10 prospects that they should be calling on, but they'll also be prompted on what the biggest issues are by those customers and what they should be talking about. So you're talking about a complete revolution in terms of how your salespeople approach their, uh, their uh, customers. And by the way, keep in mind, we're talking about B2B selling, right? Because in terms of business to consumer selling, this is already happening automatically. So what's happened is the disestablishmentarian, the, the, the AI and the automation and machine learning has eliminated the need for sophisticated sales processes and, and people in a lot of business to consumer, but in business to business, uh, that, that's different. Okay, so an example here, and, and you'll get all of this, by the way, sent to you. Uh, Harvard Business Review is saying 40% of sales work activities can be automated. And that's just right now. If we take a look five years down the line, probably closer to 60% of sales activities can be automated. And this is just an example slide. I, I thought I'd show you what, what one company is advising their customers to do and what's possible, what's potentially possible with using artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, automation for lead generation. On the left, you take a look at how do you search for your clients? Well, in five years, you'll be able to do a search. Not only that, but you'll have an AI bot that will do the search for you automatically. And you'll be able to search for directors or VPs or head of IT in software product companies, building payment processes uh, in the US, Canada, or Europe, using Salesforce or SAP, hiring large teams, right? So you'll be able to specify multiple search criteria concatenated together to find your ideal customer and your ideal trigger points. And the AI will do that by a search of big data for you automatically. That information will be sent to you, to your salespeople, that's intelligence, right? And not only that, they will score and prioritize these leads. And they'll also tell you the buying signs and the buying signals. From this, you can create campaigns. Your marketing people can create automated, personalized, multi-touch campaigns. This is directed to one person at a time, right? So the marketing messages can shift based upon the real-time information and your Somebody will open up a video or open up an email and it will be exactly what they're looking for right now. Now, right now, uh, you can do this uh, on a very primitive basis using things like uh, Google, uh, Google Alerts. Uh, I have a company that sells products for landfills. Uh, they sell products to cover, uh, you know, dumps. And so when anybody does work in that area, they post RFPs or they post a request for a proposal. And the AI in Google can automate, can find any search for, a, for automation, for a, for a dump, for a, you know, landfill operations, any, any type of RFP that goes out, Google Alerts will find that, they will deliver that directly to the sales manager who can send it to the sales rep. So, and your sales rep will know there's a landfill in Florida that, that, is, that is putting out an RFP. There's one in Michigan, there's one in California, right? They will know exactly who to call on. Well, in the future, not only will that be delivered, but it will also deliver who to call on, right? And oh, by the way, this is how old they are. This is their buying pattern. And these are the last 10 things that they bought. And, and here's the suggested sales approach. So, and not only that, you'll be able to create marketing campaigns tuned to exactly who you need. And so in terms of building your pipeline. So these are some of the areas where AI is really going to impact how sales uh, proceeds. Okay, KPMG, another huge accounting firm. These are the, the mega trends that they're talking about. They wrote a white paper called The Future of Sales and you can search for it online. I, it's a great paper, 2021, it just got released. These are the megatrends, pervasive solution selling, massive data capture. We now have the ability with supercomputers and, and, and computers that can tap into the cloud to access basically the, the business intelligence of the world. 
okay? That's massive data. And you can sort and segment it and look at it using analytics. Uh, we have a gal on the, on, the, uh, on the call that has a company that does analytics, real-time analytics to, to process this data. Uh, pervasive innovation technology, the sales representatives are now being redefined. So you're going to having to redefine who you hire to search for higher level skills. Are they really, really digital savvy? Uh, are they able to, you know, walk in the next uh, in the next generation? Can they do that? Uh, I talk about virtual reality. That could be a whole subject on its own. Uh, but virtual reality is now hitting the world of uh, of training. So. Can you imagine taking your brand new salespeople that you've recruited to your company, not brand new, but experienced, training them on a new product and a new approach using virtual reality? They can go in a room, they can put on virtual reality, and it can walk them through a real-time live simulation of how they would sell to this customer. And it's real-time and it's action-based. So VR, virtual reality, is really impacting and changing how sales training is occurring. Uh, and integrated cross uh, decision making, all of these are the trends that you're seeing uh, uh, for the next five years. Okay, I'm talking about impact. I, I, this whole thing is not about AI, but it's about machine learning, about how automation is impacting sales in the future. So I already talked about big data and AI allows for incredible insights and it automates the lower level top tasks. So your, your people that you're hiring are going to be very, very high level. A lot of your low level sales stuff is gonna be automated. So a lot of the work that you used to do for prospecting or cold calling or finding where your customers are, the AI and your automated systems are going to be automatically doing that. There's something here called AI voice. Can you imagine you know, blending voice recognition with customer transactions? Right now, when you go on to uh, you go on to you know, anybody's anybody's phone system, and it will ask you multiple questions of who you want to talk to, and then it goes down to you know this division. Would you like to talk? You know, is your problem here, 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 and here? So AI is asking you questions, getting your choices, and leading down you a menu of choices so that they can connect you to the right person, right? So sometimes that's frustrating. You get all these menu trees, right? But AI voice, can you imagine if it is incorporated with a sales rep, a salesperson on a live call? Let's say you're on a Zoom call, right? And the Zoom call is doing pattern recognition using neuro-linguistic programming to understand what the person is saying. And not only that, is this a buying signal, right? Is it time to close? AI voice is going to be giving them that. Uh, customers are going to be dry, buying without humans, VR integration, integrated cross-selling and upselling. AI chatbots are going to be used for non-complex sales tax. So this is automation really impacting sales in the future. So what are my recommendations? Recommendations, five recommendations. Each of you should go and examine your sales processes to determine where do you automate? How can you integrate automation, AI, machine learning into your sales processes? You also need to survey your customer base. You determine how exactly do you personalize, simplify, and tailor your processes. If you take a look at how customers are buying, right? How, you know, the simple thing, if, if you go into say uh, Amazon, they have one click purchasing. They already know your profile. They already know your credit card. They already know what you'd like to have. Not only that, they'll recommend five other things you ought to buy. And when you're done, you just press one button and it's done. And the next day it arrives on your doorstep. Think about how you can take your products or services and make them that easy to buy, to make the customer experience personalized and that easy. So that's what you need to do. Along with that, you'd have to redefine the selling skills. Who do you hire and what skills do you need to look for and what skills can you train for? Because today's salespeople, the skills are, the basic skills are still needed, but the refined skills need to be there. So I'm always advising people continuously hiring and training your salespeople to meet the next challenge in the next five years. And finally, you need to enhance your CRM, customer interfaces, uh, your website, your LinkedIn interface, your social media, 
all of that needs to be optimized so that it is really, really easy for your customers to find you and to buy from you and to do that quickly, easily, and simply over the internet. So wrapping it up, this is me, uh, my contact information. I'm available for phone calls. You can text me. I'm, I'm, I really like to be a maximum resource to everybody on this call. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Bill. I think I'm okay with time. Yeah, Pat, uh, fabulous. Uh, another example, uh, the whole morning is another example of how we, we bring unique information every month uh, to, uh, from, from places and from people that you just don't get every day. I mean, I uh, alluded to the TV show 60 Minutes. Well, uh, this was a, a fabulous report uh, triggered by our dis my discussion with Pat, where I said we kind of orient everything toward the future. So that reminds me, any of you that have uh, you know, uh, insight into the way business is changing in your particular area, let me know. There might be a presentation that you could bring to us. So uh, with that said, I'm going to open it up for some questions or comments uh, uh, to, uh, to Pat. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a question, Pat. Uh, where does the uh, concept of building and maintaining personal relationships come into all this? And so in process. Question. Excellent question. I, uh, and the personalized contact comes into, uh, like for instance, there was the KPFG report. They talked about personalizing. They talked about optimizing. So the personalized contact is particularly appropriate in B2B and B2C selling. So it will always be true that customers buy from people that they like and respect. So the ability of your top level salespeople to develop rapport with their end users is a, that will never go away. Now, how you build that right now, we're right now in a remote environment in Zoom, right? So it's up to me to develop the skill to build some level of rapport with the people on the audience. Well, that means I need to look at the camera and I need to look at you and you need to see the smile on my face. So I need to develop the ability to build rapport. So if I'm doing a sales call and I've done a lot of them and I've got sales you know, potential customers or prospects in the room, I need to speak to them. I need to smile and I need to connect with them. So even in a remote selling world, your salespeople need to be trained. How do you do a sales presentation on Zoom? How does that happen, right? Now, so we're really entering a hybrid world where part of your selling skills is gonna be digital and part of it over this, but you know, bottom line, when, when you're selling a multi-million dollar product and you've got a boardroom and you're presenting to, you better have the face-to-face -face communication skills in order to be able to do that. So it's not, the face-to-face -face is not going away, but it's, it's being augmented by what we can do in the digital world. Excellent uh, response. Uh, other questions, input? Uh, Don Davis here. Uh, sort of a question from left field, uh, Pat. Always good to listen to you. But, uh, you know, as a lawyer, not particularly a trial lawyer, but I watched the Rittenhouse uh, proceeding in depth. I kind of uh, uh, agreed with the decision of the jury after waiting through both sides on TV. They had great coverage. But, but the question is this, as a trial lawyer, in that case, it came out that the defendant, because he raised a lot of money online and had fancy lawyers, had three separate mock trials before they ever got to uh, that case, the jury and picking the jury and stuff. So, so what's this mean for society going forward using the skills that you uh, outlined here in terms of those folks with money who have one sort of justice uh, in a trial and those folks who are black kids or Chicanos or whatever in the, in the ghetto that have a different sort of trial experience? Wow. I'm not sure if I understand what the question was there, but I do know that technology has completely revolutionized uh, you know, the world of law. Uh, if you, there's a program that I enjoy watching called Bull. It's on like, the CBS or whatever. And it's all about optimizing the jury selection and the mock trial, right? Now, if you take a look at how that's going to change, imagine not only, you know, not having to pay everybody, but getting people in the digital world and assembling a whole group of people like this, right? And doing a mock trial and running through your present and getting real time live feedback from them. Do they like it if they raise their hand or they lower their hand? So I think you can expand that. Uh, as, far as, as far as the uh, societal uh, ethical 
uh, it, I think it's always going to be true that the people that have accumulated wealth are going to be able to optimize systems better than the people that haven't. So uh, unless we're in a socialistic world, uh, you know, the cream is going to rise to the top and they're going to enjoy better things. Uh, I don't think that's ever going to change. That's human nature. Uh, we do need to reach out and have change.